Uh, I say it's complement because I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna address the questions raised in that problem on page seven. In fact, I do some complement remarks in relation to that. The problems which are raised there, the answer to that are given in the, in, in the handwritten solution and they're relatively simple. But I wanna just look at that problem a little bit further. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's example on page seven, the very last one on the bottom of the page. So on that page, you have, the given, you're given three vectors, u, a1, and a2. I keep the notation of the of the example, and what I'm going to do now, uh, rather than addressing that problem, I'll ask you this. I, mean, I have this diagram. So, here's the vector a1, here's the vector a2, here's the vector u. I just conveniently put this into the into this box just to make the uh, perception of, of 3D space. Uh, just, it will help a little bit to, to the to the exposition. Right, so the question I want to ask now is this. Like the question we asked before with two vectors, now we have three. How can we find the distance, how we can find the distance from the tip of this vector down to the span of these two? We know the span of these two will be the, span, will be the plane, right? This time it is a plane rather than the line. Yeah, just I can drop a few lines, a few like a dashed lines to this plane, and I can test the distances like this, and I can ask which of those will be the shortest one. Analytically, analytically, we have to just do the same thing we did last time. We have to look at something like this. We have to look at something like this. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Should... Analytically, we have to look at something like this. We have to look at the function. This time it will be a function of two variables, and I call them x and y. And that will be the function like this. So you see, here's my span of two vectors. Here's my u, and this whole thing, subject to the square, of course, this whole thing gives me the distance from the tip of the vector u down to the particular choice of a point in a span of a1 and a2. And the choice of this point is, of course, it depends on my choice of the variables x and y. And analytically now, analytically, what we have to do, we have to minimize this function over x and y, isn't it? Something you did like on multiple occasions in your analysis, analysis part of this topic, minimizing or maximizing functions. There is, of course, there is a little complication here. Who sees the complication? Thank you very much. It's a function of two variables. You never look at this kind of problems. You look at the function of one variable. Function of two variables, it's a little bit harder than, actually, it's substantially harder, because there is a variety of extreme problems there. Those of you who, those of you who will continue to study second year, you will find out a few methods which help you to do that. What we will do, we just take this distance, and we approach this distance with a scalar, with the, with the dot product, sorry. So what, what I'm looking at, I'm, I'm looking at the dot product of this vector with itself. I'm looking at the dot product of this vector with itself. And like before, I will make my expansion. This time I will make it in a speedy way. I'm not going to make it well, because it's a rather lengthy expansion. So I'm, well, I'm, when I make my expansion, I have something like this. So when I, for instance, if I multiply this neg x a1 with this x a1, and remembering that a with a1 with a1 dot product is just a length with square, that's the coefficient which will come up. When I multiply ax2 with the Sorry, y a2 with the y a2. It's another one which will come up, this one. When I multiply this one with the y, it will be like a mixed combination of a1 and a2. And this kind of mixed combination will appear twice, right? Because when I go this x with this y, or this y with this x, so here's my 2. Uh, I continue probably somewhere down here, yes. Now we also have something where u is involved. So when u, you multiply this u with one of these or with one of these, or when you multiply this u with one of these or with one of these, it will begin double of each. And that's, the, that, that's how this will be. And finally, there is like u with itself. u with itself. That's the function we're looking at. Uh, for convenience, for convenience, I will just, let me just make it this way. I'll just abbreviate all of this coefficient because it's a function in terms of x and y. All of the other components here, just numbers. So I will just abbreviate these numbers with letters, like this. It will be like ax squared, by squared, double cxy, negative 2dx, negative 2ey. I don't know why it's two negatives, but we can, I oh know, it's not, it's not a negative, it's just this picture. The boundary of this picture makes it. Let me just move it here. Let's move it here. So, if you if you understand what I just did, of course this A capital stands for this square, this B stands for this square, C stands for this uh, dot product, 
G and E, they are this, and this dot product respectively F is this length. So I'm just, I, I did this just to show you the structure of the function uh -huh. we're looking at. And of course, there's a method how to minimize this function. But even, even if you know those methods, because I will, for instance, I know those methods, it's not really that easy to, to find the minimum of this function. So what we will do next, we will introduce some simplifying assumptions on this initial setup, which will make this, 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 this task feasible, even for the people who knows how to minimize functions of two variables. It's a, it's a piece of a definition which exists in your lecture notes, and that's a, it's a very important piece of a definition. It makes lots of dealings with vectors a lot simpler. If you, if you don't have it, I mean, in comparison, if you don't have it. So look at this, what it says. If you have a family of vectors, n of them, a1, a2, a, n, you call this system orthonormal if two conditions are met. Two conditions are met. One of them is, one of them is that the all vectors are unital. All vectors are unital. All of them are unital, k from 1 to n. And the other condition is vectors are pairwise orthogonal. So you see, when I take the dot product of the different pairs, different pairs, so k not equal to j, it's not like a with itself, the result is zero. So we call the, well, this is, this, is, this is called pairwise orthogonal condition. This is a unital condition. If this family is such, we call this family orthonormal family of vectors. Typical example, typical example of the orthonormal family of vectors is the standard basis vectors. Remember those which were like 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So vectors which has all zeros except one in one particular chosen position. It's a typical example of the orthonormal system of vectors. Now, if I put this extra condition on my two vectors, a1 and a2, so if I request them to be extra orthonormal, So if I, well, if in this now, but back to this problem, if I now ask my vectors to be orthonormal, this function becomes a lot simpler, a lot simpler, because look at the coefficients. This coefficient will be one. It's the orthonormal condition. This coefficient will be one. This coefficient will be zero because of the perpendicular condition on the A1 and A2. So if I know in advance that A1 and A2 are not just randomly chosen vectors, but still randomly, but orthonormal, my function becomes simpler. It becomes like this. Three, uh, two coefficients becomes identities, and one just disappears. This kind of function we can study for minimum without any advanced knowledge of the second year math. Who knows how? We can complete the square. Thank you. We can complete the square because like, if I combine this x with this double dx and this y with this double ey, it's, it's a perfect choice, a per perfect opportunity to do completion of the square. If I complete the square, look what I will have. That's the completion around x. This is a completion around e, uh, sorry, around y. Now, I have to, of course, like, if you expand this, if you back, back uh, uh, try to verify this, if you expand this, first two term in the expansion will cover this x, will cover this negative 2d, 2dx. But the third one, we have, it's not covered. We have to take care of that, and that's my taking care of that. And now we can answer the question when this function takes the minimum value, right? Because we're looking at the function, which is basically a number, plus two positive quantities. Two positive quantities, and this positive, the lower these positive quantities are, the lower the function. And the lowest of the low for these two positive quantities is when they are zeros. And they will be zeros when your x will be d, and when your y will be e. So your minimum... Your minimum of the function happens when x equals g, happens when y equals e, and the minimal value of the function is this value. If you look back, if you look back at the, what we were looking at, remember the function was like this. Geometrically, it was a distance, and this x and this y, they were these proportions of in your in your span of vector a1 and a2, and now we know the exact values of these proportions, which ensure the shortest distance. This is d and e. Remember, d was this value and e was this value. So if I now sub everything in, I can tell you that the, if I now call this vector, this particularly chosen vector which, have, which, which ensures the shortest distance, if I call this vector a projection, like I did with the two vectors, 
if I call this a projection, I call it here, you see, I, mm -hmm. you can see here the little sub, well, actually capital sub index S, I'll explain what this S stands for in a second, but if I call this vector a projection, this vector will be this vector. This is this linear combination with the specifically found, specifically chosen x and y. This s is just a span of a1 and a2. And that's how we find the projection onto a span of two vectors rather than one vector. We have now analytical formula for that. The only extra condition we require that these two vectors, they must be orthonormal. You can compare this with the formula for, for instance, when you go for the span of one vector for the line, the one which we did last time. In a similar fashion, if you have enough, I mean, like a, enough uh, patience, probably you can figure out how to com come up with this projection onto the span of three vectors or four vectors, especially given to the to this given this extra orthonormality condition. And that's already very advanced stuff. Actually, you will be looking at when you come up with those with those formulae. Any question? Yes. Geometrically, well, if you uh, if you believe that this all of these angles are 90 degrees, I mean, like it, it you, this picture makes such an impression, but I didn't, I never stated that, right? But this picture makes such an impression. Then this projection, it will be not a drop perpendicular. It will be this diagonal which goes from the origin, because this vector is a span of a1 and a2. This is this is a vector which is supposed to be in the plane, so it's the vector which will be going from the origin down to the base of your drop perpendicular. However, however. The fact that this vector will be a perpendicular, in fact, I mean, not this vector, but the difference of the, I mean, this vector, uh, this vector, you take projection S U, this vector. The fact that this vector, the difference of U with the projection, so your like an intuition and your experience with the three dimensional space suggests it will be the drop perpendicular. The formal justification of that as the handwritten solution for the problem on page seven. It is actually this kind of this problem is raised on the page seven, and that's that's why they, they test it. So the reason I call this the complement, the problem on page seven doesn't give you the explanation why this expression appears. And it doesn't give you the name for that. This explains to you why the problem on page seven looks at the combination like this, like this. Because this combination gives you the analytical formula for this very important vector, a projection of a given one onto a span of two. That's why I call the complement to the page seven. Any questions? Yes. What do you do on projection? I mean just this. Or by definition, I mean it's this. It's a vector which ensures the shortest distance. That's what I mean by projection. And then by as a, like as a well, as a consequence of that, we end up with the fact that actually the projection will be like a perpendicular to the plane. That's the consequence. This is a conse consequence which is established in the uh, in the problem on page seven. 